Most of my videos I've done about the TV series Heroes have been along the lines of everything was good up until this point, where I would have done things differently. But today I'm tackling a character who is a little more challenging, in that there's scarcely anything the series did worth salvaging. We're talking about the Season 2 big villain Adam Monroe. I had three big problems with what the series did with Adam. The beginning, middle, and end of what they did with him. The beginning, Hiro Nakamura traveling to feudal Japan and accidentally turning Adam into the bitter villain he is in the present day. That stuff is easy. We won't do it. If you haven't watched my video about Hero, I suggested he should have died in the Season 1 finale, which means he doesn't spend over half of Season 2 stranded in the past, where he meets his childhood hero Takizo Kinze and accidentally betrays him by kissing the lady Takizo likes, which leads to Takizo hating all of humanity and, in the present day, wanting to release a virus which will eliminate 93% of the planetary population. This was a weak catalyst for creating this villain, but since we've already established Hero won't be going to the 1600s, we won't have to worry about any of that. My next problem, Adam wants to kill most of humanity, ending the never-ending cycle of violence. There are so many reasons this does not work. One, it's reminiscent of Daniel Linderman's plot in Season 1. Eliminate a certain number of people in some kind of catastrophe to unify what's left of the planet. This itself is already a lift from the Watchmen, and repeating that one season later was lazy. Bob Bishop says Linderman was Adam's disciple, implying Linderman got the idea from Adam. I generally hate this. You thought that guy was bad? Well, he was just a warm-up for this next guy. I get why they do it. You want to escalate things so people don't feel less excited now than they did a year ago. But the problem with escalation is you will never be able to maintain that pace. Eventually, you are going to have to do something smaller than a bad guy who almost killed 93% of the population. I'd rather escalate by doing something different than what we've seen before, but not necessarily bigger, as that would be easier to maintain. And Adam never struck me as the kind of guy who would want to end the cycle of violence. We're told he became a mercenary in the Revolutionary War because he was bored. When Hero first meets him, he's a bandit for hire. Sure, a lot can change a man in 400 years, but his given reason for doing what he does contradicts his behavior and other actions. Then there's how the series gets rid of Adam. Apparently, David Anders' schedule was busy, so they needed to get rid of the character, even though Hero had already buried him alive. So the next big villain, he's even scarier than Adam. Adam is terrified when he sees him, absorbs Adam's powers with a touch, turning him to dust. What a disappointing end to a disappointing character. Just because I didn't like what sees Season 2 did with him does not mean that he had to go out like a chump. So what would I do differently? I'd say Adam was still connected to the founders of the company. As inconsistently as the company founders were all portrayed, it seems all of them were perfectly content for the superhumans to remain in the shadows. So what if Adam, after centuries of walking this earth, is tired of living in the shadows? With all of our combined resources and literal powers, we could change this planet for the better. Look how many pandemics, wars, and other human-made catastrophes I've lived through. We could put an end to all of that if we reveal ourselves to the world. The company guys might think Adam is too dangerous. If he tries this, he's going to encounter a lot of opposition. Millions of people will die in the process. From Adam's point of view, they're happy living like kings, and upsetting the status quo might result in them losing their prestige and status. So they imprison Adam, and we first meet him in the company's prison for dangerous superhumans at the beginning of Season 2. While Sylar is making his escape, please see my video on Sylar, Adam escapes as well. Since I've already suggested the company was experimenting with a virus that will remove the the abilities of those they deem too dangerous, Adam will know what they're up to in this prison, so his goal is to shut down this virus before it falls into even wronger hands. Adam somehow got files of superhumans who could help him put a stop to this, so he finds Peter Petrelli with no memories of his former life, happily retired. No, you don't remember anything, you won't be able to help me. He tries to get Noah Bennett and Hannah Gittleman to help him, but after Noah betrayed the company once already, he's afraid of what they'll do to his family if he openly fights them again. Adam spends a chunk of the season trying to find allies to help him stop this thing, and we, the audience, wouldn't know what he's trying to stop till closer to the end of the season. I wouldn't have Adam hunting down the founders of the company. I used that in my video about Nikki Sanders, but you could still make that work. When Adam escapes, the founders are all worried because they left him in prison for a few decades, so they think he probably wants revenge. Mari Parkman recruits Jessica. Adam comes to Mari to talk sense to him. Help me make sure this virus doesn't do some damage. Mari is useless, but Jessica offers to help Adam. He's getting impatient. Nobody will help him. He's losing time before someone does something dangerous with this virus. So he accepts her offer. They make their way to Odessa. He'd rather have more help, but he's running out of time. Meanwhile, Nathan Petrelli and Matt Parkman can more or less be doing the same stuff they did in the show, unless I think of something better to do with them in a future video, and they run into Adam and Jessica in Odessa. Nathan remembers Jessica. Uh-oh, she's bad news. Adam has read these guys' files. He knows their parents are founding members
members of the company. What if they're here to stop him? A fight erupts. Adam just wants to destroy the virus, but because of a big misunderstanding, he accidentally releases the strain of the shanty virus we saw in the show, which killed most of humanity in a possible future. Instead of killing him off just to make the next season's villain seem that much scarier, you keep him around. If David Anders has to film Children of the Corn, then say Adam's keeping a low profile for most of season three, coming up with strategies as the company will likely be coming after him even harder now that he's released this virus. He regrets his part in what he was trying to prevent while becoming a villain in the eyes of those who knew about his quest in season two. There's any number of directions you could take this guy that would be more interesting than what the show did. That's about all I have for this video, but look for some more Heroes videos in a couple of months. Until then, have a great rest of the day.